Welcome to our lecture online and the next topic is simplifying rational expressions. Now what is a rational expression? Well an expression is a sum of terms such as this right here x squared plus 7x plus 12 would be considered an expression that that is differentiated from an equation. Equation has a left side and a right side and an equal sign. Expression is just a sum of terms. It could be a single term, it could be a single character, it could be a, it could be 3x, it could be whatever, but that would be an expression and a rational expression is an expression in the form of a fraction. So rational means that it's a fraction. And so what we have here is some representations of fractional expressions. For example, if a was equal to x squared plus 7x plus 12, and let's say b was equal to 3x minus 4, we could then say that a would be x squared plus 7x plus 12, b would be 3x minus 4, and so forth. And so we have a number of uh, fractional expressions here. And what we need to learn is that there are certain operations we can do and certain operations that we cannot do, common errors, and we'll try to differentiate between them. So first of all, when we have a times c divided by b times c, notice that they have a common factor, and so we can cancel it out. The reason why we cancel it out is because we're multiplying a times c and b times c. If this was a plus c and b plus c, we would not be able to do that. Here, if we have a divided by b times c divided by d, is exactly the same as if we put them over the same denominator like this, a times c divided by b times d, that, that means exactly the same thing, no difference whatsoever. If, however, we're dividing, for example, a divided by b divided by c divided by d, that is the same as multiplying by the inverse. Simply flip this over, it's taking the inverse of that fraction, and so we can say that we can turn that into a multiplication. It's a lot easier to work with the multiplication than to work with the division. So simply, if you see something like this, you simply turn the last fraction around, make that multiplication sign, and then you go ahead and simplify it. And of course, the techniques of simplification will show that in some examples in the next video. Here we have a plus b over c, that can be written as a divided by c plus b divided by c. It means exactly the same thing. And finally, if you have a divided by b plus c divided by d, notice that the denominators are not the same, and you want to add, that means you have to find the common denominator. One way to find the common denominator is to multiply b times d, so that then becomes a common denominator. To accomplish that, you will multiply both the top and the bottom by what is missing here, which would be the d, and then here, you're missing a b, so you're going to multiply both the top and the bottom, numerator and denominator, by what's missing, in this case, the b. And notice now you have it over the same denominator, so you can then combine the denominators. That kind of looks like uh, what we have over here. So this can be written like that. That's kind of the reverse process from what we have over here. So those are the common things that you should know how to do. And you should know that this is legal and fine. You can do that according to the rules of algebra. But here's some common errors a lot of students make that you have to be careful of. Never do this. A divided by B plus C is not equal to A divided by B plus A divided by C. Another common mistake is when people see this, they simply write that instead. Not the same thing, not correct. Or if they see a radical like this, they write it like this. Again, not the same thing. You can only do that if this was multiplied, not when you have an addition. And same here when you see this, the square root sign does not negate the exponent's right there because we have this plus sign in there, so that's not equal to that. You cannot do that. Again, if you have 1 over a plus 1 over b, is not the same as 1 over a plus b. It does not work. If you have this, this is another one that I see a lot students make. So a plus b divided by a, they cancel out the a's and they're left with the b. Again, you cannot do that. It's not correct. And finally, when you have something like this, a to the minus 1 plus b to the minus 1 is not equal to a plus b quantity to the minus 1. Very common mistakes commonly made. Let's say you're taking a test and you have something that looks like this and you wonder if you can do this. How do you make sure that you can or cannot? It is really easy to check that out very quickly by plugging in some, some numbers. For example, in this case, you say, well, let a equals 2 and b, b equals 3 and see if you get the same number on both sides of the equation. So that would be 1 over, uh, so this would be uh, 1 over a plus 1 over b would be equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. And in this case, you would get 1 over 2 plus 3, that would be 1 over 5. So the question is, is 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 the same as 1 over 5? 
If you put this over the same denominator, this could be written as 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6, which is equal to 5 over 6. And you can see that 5 over 6 is not the same as 1 over 5, so therefore you realize, oh, this is not the same. I can't do that. So it's always easy to very quickly plug in some numbers and see if you get the same result. For example, in this case, a plus b squared, is that the same as a squared plus b squared? Well, if a was 2 and b was 3, a plus 2, uh, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 squared is 25, and a squared, that would be 2 squared would be 4, that would be 3 squared would be 9, 4 plus 9 is 13, so 25 is not equal to 13, therefore you can show yourself that is not the same thing. Common errors that can quickly be shown not to be correct, and if you ever have a situation where you're not sure what to do, quickly throw some small numbers in there and see if you get the same result. If not, you know you can do that, and that would be the way to avoid making those common errors. Anyway, these are the rules that you need to follow. Those are the things you need to stay away from. Now in the next video, we're going to show some examples of how to simplify rational expressions.